Hello and welcome to Aftershoot, a revolutionary system to speed up your workflow. In today's video, we are going over Aftershoot edits. Let's get started. You'll notice Aftershoot edits is the same Aftershoot you knew before from Culling, but now there's some new buttons and features that are going to allow you to edit your images. You'll notice first that we now have a Culling and Editing Start button on your home screen, and they will turn into a view after you've completed either a cull or an edit. You'll also notice that there is a brand new logo with the white A, meaning that you have not begun editing, and the rainbow colored A to just reinforce that the editing has been completed. Now before you get started with editing, you need to make sure that you have built your AI profile. So to get started, you can either click on new profile on the right hand sidebar, or you can go ahead and click on your name and my AI profiles to see all of your past AI profiles that you've created, or simply clicking new AI profile to start building a new profile. The first thing you want to do when you create an AI profile is name it. So we are going to name this test profile. And then you need to decide whether you have raw or JPEG images. Now this means what are the images that you imported into Lightroom? So what was your starting point? Were you shooting in camera in raw or were you shooting in camera in JPEG? Now the reason this is important is because it's not the exported finalized images that we're looking at. We're actually looking at the starting point of what your images looked like before you edited them. And then we'll be analyzing the edits that you applied to them based on the situation and creating your profile based on that. So it's really important that you get this aspect right, that the raw images that you shot are connected to Lightroom. It's also important to note that if your raw images were moved at any point in time since your Lightroom catalog was created, you may need to reconnect them in Lightroom for Aftershoot to be able to find them. So let's say you finished editing something and you punted those raw images to another computer or another hard drive. If Lightroom doesn't know that new location, Aftershoot won't be able to know that new location as well. Uh, the next decision you have to make is whether you're making a color profile or a black and white profile. So if you want to make a color profile, something that will edit all of your color images, you'll select color. If you want to make a black and white profile to make everything black and white with that profile, you'll go ahead and click on black and white. Next, you'll click on continue. Now this screen is super important. This is where you're going to be able to actually select all the catalogs you'd like to include in your training set. Be sure to check out our other videos on how to create the best profile in Aftershoot edits. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and show you the process from start to finish. You're able to actually drag and drop photos into Aftershoot edits, browse your system, or choose from recent. Now I have a catalog here that I'm going to add. And it's going to warn me that this is a large Lightroom catalog. And the reason that you're getting warned is because it means that it will take a minute for us to go through the entire Lightroom catalog and see all of the images possible for us to train on. So the larger the Lightroom catalog, the slower these screens will load. If you have Lightroom catalogs for each individual project, you should expect them to perform a lot quicker than if you have Lightroom catalogs for, say, 10 projects. Also going to load in a secondary catalog so you can see the navigation of how this would operate with multiple catalogs. Now it's important to note you can upload up to 15 different catalogs at the same time. Um, so we'll add one more just to be safe. So your profile can be trained on many different catalogs if you'd like it to. The more data you provide after shoot edits, the more accurate your editing will be. You can also create a profile with as few as 2,500 images meaning your profile may be less accurate, but you need less images to start. So we're going to go ahead and click on continue with our three Lightroom catalogs connected. Now you can use smart previews or raw images in this case. Now you saw in the past screen it said raw or JPEG. That's simply asking what the starting point was so we know what changes were made from the original image to get to your final edited solution. But all we need is the Lightroom catalog and either access to the raw images or if you have the smart previews already built, we can access those smart previews as well. If you'd like to learn how to build smart previews, you can check out our other video on how to build smart previews in order to speed up the entire process. Aftershoot will operate more quickly if we have access to smart previews than if we have to access the raw images. And this is both for editing and for profile training. Now that our catalog is connected, you'll see that we have quite a few images available to us. I have three Lightroom catalogs on my sidebar here. You'll see we have the first one, 
the second one, and the third one. By clicking on any one of these, I can fine tune what images I want to include in my training. So to get started, we're gonna go with this catalog. First thing I need to do is define what images are edited. And to do this, I'm gonna say my five star images that are not flagged. These are all of the images that I have edited in this catalog. The second thing I need to do is either select the folders from this catalog or by clicking here, I can view the collections. Now, when I finish editing, I always mark my images as done. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on these collections that have been marked as done. And that means that I now have 5,610 photos available to upload to train my profile. Now I'm gonna head to my 2022 Engagements LR Cat. Now again, I have to define whether or not I want five star images, four star images, flagged, unflagged. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on collections again because here I have edited images available to me. So I've added it up to 6,000 images and I'll head down to my last catalog and do the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and look. Now this catalog, I actually haven't finished editing yet. What I'm gonna do is select all for the folders and I'm gonna click unflagged because I don't want to have unflagged images. My sneak peeks are always flagged. So you'll see I have just a handful of images that are flagged. Those are all my sneak peeks that I've edited for my clients already. So that adds another 100 photos to the available set. So now I have a grand total of 6,289 images. Now one thing you're going to notice up top is that it says that there's missing original RAWs or smart previews. Why it says this is because I have my raw images stored in a different place than my catalogs. And so if I were to select all of the images, I don't have all of them connected. Those raw files are on a separate hard drive and I don't have smart previews built for all of those raw files. But in this case, because I'm only selecting my edited photos, I've made smart previews for all of these already prior to making this video. So all of the files I actually need are here, which is why I have 6,289 photos to train on. Now, once I've gone through all of my catalogs and applied all the filters I'd like to include for these uploaded images, I'm gonna click on Upload. And what it's going to do is begin the process. So first thing it's gonna do is verify that my smart previews are here or verify that my raw files are here. And once it's either found the smart previews, it'll start uploading those. Or if it's found the raw files, but no smart previews, it's actually going to start creating its own previews using the Adobe DNG converter that's built into your computer. If it needs to access that, you'll notice on the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll see this Adobe DNG bouncing up and down because we're converting all of our own smart previews to upload. The next step for Aftershoot is to actually upload those. So we do need an internet connection for this portion of the training. But once your profile is downloaded back to your computer, you don't need to be connected to the internet to run your editing. Now this process varies in the length of time that it actually takes to complete because it's based on how many images you're uploading and then it has to train on all of those images. So the more images you use, the longer it will take to create your profile. But again, the more images you use, the more accuracy you should expect out of your profile. After your profile has gone up to our service for training, you're able to actually continue on using Aftershoot for culling until you get that profile back. And if you've already trained a profile, you can actually edit while your new profile is uploading and training. Once your profile has completed on our servers, you'll get an email as well as alert in the app that says, congratulations, your AI profile was successfully created. You can find it under my AI profiles. We're gonna go ahead and click on begin editing. And now we're in a very similar screen to our upload screen, but now we're actually able to begin editing. As mentioned, you don't need a Wi-Fi connection or internet connection to actually edit in the app once your profile has downloaded. Now in our AI profile screen, we have the ability to view the AI profiles we've created and improve these profiles as well. So simply by clicking on improve profile, we can choose to connect more Lightroom catalogs, whether these are catalogs that we didn't include when we originally trained, or if these are catalogs that we've edited that are corrections from what Aftershoot originally edited. You can do it either way. So you can simply piece together a larger profile if you'd like, or you can continue to improve upon a profile as you go through editing. If you have 2,500 images, you're able to actually create a profile, 
but we do recommend improving the profile constantly as you complete your edits, as this will help improve the accuracy of the profile. Now, the process is the same, so we'll go through and actually select a catalog, and we'll add this catalog to it, similar to the way we did before. So, we've connected the catalog, and we're gonna click on Continue. And in the same vein as when you originally trained the catalog, we're going to look for the filters we want to apply within that catalog, as well as either collections or folders. So I'm going to go ahead and click on collections, and I'm going to highlight just the edited catalogs that I'd like to add to the system. Now, you'll notice that I don't have a lot of images here. I only have 266. You can upload small batches if you'd like, but the main reason that that is is because I have it set to flagged. And in this case, it doesn't matter if they're flagged or unflagged to me. Only my five-star edited images are in these collections. So now you'll see by deselecting the flagged button, I have 5,876 photos that I can improve my profile on. So I'm going to click on Upload, and it's going to go through the same process and upload these images, and then it'll go through the retraining process, and then I'll get a new downloaded profile available to me to be able to tweak, adjust, and adapt my new edits on and continually improve after shoot edits. We have a video specifically devoted to how to create the best AI profiles. Be sure to check that out because the starting point of the images that you're actually uploading really do affect the direct outcome of the edits you'll be receiving through Aftershoot. And as always, if you have any trouble within the app, be sure to reach out to our in-app support available 24-7 to you. This could be anything from troubles with edits, troubles to uploading catalogs or connecting catalogs, or anything under the sun, we're always available for you within the app. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out our other videos on how to use Aftershoot edits and Aftershoot culling.